In this lecture, we're going to start to look at the basics of the C++ programming language and how to construct things like classes and include them in uh, the programs that we write. <clears throat> I want to first start off by looking at the Hello World program that I generated in the last podcast. Um, it was automatically generated for us, and so I really didn't do anything. Um, but I wanted to explain some of the things that are actually in the, uh, the program. So for instance, <clears throat> you'll see here at the very beginning is that we've, uh, we've included this IO stream library. Uh, and we need this library in order to do any type of printing, um, especially to the console and, and whatnot. So <clears throat> the other piece that's here is this, uh, this namespace that's being referred to. Uh, the namespace STD re re refers to the standard um, uh, the standard package or the standard namespace for um, standard library uh, types of functions. So uh, the fact that we're using C out uh, in the program as well as end L requires us to uh, then use this uh, standard namespace. So a matter of fact, if I remove this, then we end up getting a compilation error here showing that uh, uh, C out and end L can't be resolved, and that's because they are in that namespace. We could actually fix this by um, doing the resolution operation on the uh, C out and end L, uh, but of course we don't want to have to type that every single time we write a simple uh, write a simple program. So instead, we will actually use uh, the namespace. Uh, okay, so. <clears throat> Uh, anyway, the, the syntax here for printing out uh, a program, uh, C out is uh, the character stream uh, for, for standard output. This would be similar to uh, system.out uh, in Java. And then we're using this uh, shift operator, the, uh, uh, the less than operator, twice uh, to indicate that we're going to print this item here and then we're going to concatenate that with the end of line character. Uh, in Java, we would normally do something like backslash n and then end l, but in C++, the standard way of doing this is to use the end l um, uh, op operator. <coughs> okay, so anyway, this is going to print hello world, which is, you know, of course what we expect. Um, the um, next thing I want to do is I want to create a class I'm going to call it my class. So we're going to create a new class. And I'm going to put it in namespace CSE274. And I'm going to call this my class. And if there are classes that it inherits from, we could add that here as base classes. We're not going to do that here at the moment. And then we're going to have the um, class generate, uh, or the, the wizard generate both a constructor and a destructor for us. And anyway, so that's our, um, that's our basic class. And I'm going to click on Finish. It's created two files here for me. One of them is the .h file. This is the header file, referred to as the header file. This contains uh, a definition of the uh, the structure of the class or the signature of the class. So you'll see here that there's a public section and it's defining all, this is where we define the signatures for all of our public methods uh, as well as any of the public uh, attributes that would be part of the class. If I want to add <clears throat> private members to this, I type in the keyword private. Now in Java, we would use these visibility operators before each one of the methods and attributes for the class. Here we just define sections uh, within our class definition. One of the other things I want to point out is this, uh, this semicolon. This is very important, very important that you put that semicolon in there. Uh, there are so many times that I've debugged students' code and it's missing that semicolon. It's a very simple thing to, to leave out, and I know that I do it uh, myself sometimes. If you're using the wizard to generate your class, it'll do it for you. If you're writing your class and you forget to put it, that in there, that can be uh, the source of many headaches for debugging where your, your problems are. 
Okay, so I'm going to, uh, let's see, let's add some attributes here. So I'm going to define private attributes, attribute zero, two integers, and a character attribute as part of my class. And I am going to use Eclipse to automatically generate getters and setters for me. I'm going to select them all. So I can, of course, just like in Java, I can choose which ones to actually use. Uh, we can also decide whether or not we're going to put the implementations in the header file. So for now, let's stick to uh, not selecting this option, but there are reasons for why we would want to do this. <clears throat> um, but uh, we'll leave that to later in the semester as we start to talk about templated classes. All right, so if I click on Next here, it'll show me uh, what the changes in the source files are going to be. Uh, so you'll see here, this is what the change in the <clears throat> in the header file is going to be. I believe that I can switch to see what the difference is in the dot, the dot C, what the, uh, yeah, where's the dot CPP files are. Hmm. Oh, here. So <clears throat> these are the changes that would happen in the source file. Uh, the .cpp file. All right, so let's click on Finish. And so you see here we've got the, that change in the, the header file. Let's go over to the, the source file. Um, the source files are used, so in, in, uh, uh, in Java, or sorry, in C++, the uh, uh, source and the headers are split into multiple files. Uh, and let's, uh, let's save this. Is it not, oh, I need to save this here in order to resolve these. Okay, so uh, the uh, the source files are split, are split into multiple. Actually, the uh, creation of a class is split up into multiple files. You have your header file, and then you have your source file. One of the things to notice here is that each of these is sort of self-contained. They're not. Uh, contained each of these method definitions are not contained within a larger class definition but rather um, defined independently uh, one of the things that this allows us to do is actually create multiple files for our solutions uh, and as a demonstration of this let me create let me create a new um, source file and I'm going to call this my class .cp, my class 2.cpp and uh, what I need to do is make sure that I include the, um, the .h file here, and then also include the namespace. So include my class .h, and then namespace csc274. And now, now what I can do is I can split my implementation across multiple files. This isn't a, a practice that is really suggested all that often, uh, mostly because uh, it can be quite confusing and sort of a, a nightmare to maintain something like this. But I'm going to put my constructors and my destructors into one file and then have everything else in another file. Okay. So the only thing that I needed to do really is make sure that everything is contained within the um, uh, within the namespace, but otherwise everything uh, is self-contained. So I have the constructor here, uh, I have the getters and the setters in this other file, and then that will all compile and it'll execute um, properly. Uh, but the the, one of the things that you want to make sure that you do uh, when uh, creating these con these uh, methods is that you do need to make sure that you include the name of the class, so in this case my class, with the double colon uh, to, so that you're resolving the name of the class um, to, the, uh, to the method. So if I were to omit <coughs> this piece here, you see that we get an error. The, the program, the compiler doesn't know that this method, get attribute zero, is part of the class my class. It isn't until you actually resolve it um, 
with the name of the class and double colons that it's able to recognize that it's that this method is indeed the same method as this get attribute zero that's in the, the header file. All right, so let's actually do something with this uh, with this code. Let's change the well. Well, in the constructor, let's set the value of attribute zero equal to five. Attribute one equal to ten. To equal it's a character, so let's make it C. <clears throat> so here you notice that I'm using the this operator, or sorry, the this object, uh, or the this reference, um, to indicate that uh, I'm accessing the attributes uh, for the class. This is similar to what happens in Java, the this object, uh, and uh, the difference here is I'm using the right arrow. Um, and when I have a pointer uh, and then this right arrow, that refers to um, the, the, the <coughs> attributes of uh, a pointer. Uh, in this case, the, uh, the reference to the, the current object. Okay, and you'll see this also in the, uh, in the generated files. Uh, uh, here, the <coughs> there is no... Um, uh, there's no ambiguity as to which uh, attribute I'm and uh, which name I'm actually referring to, but in the generated code for the set uh, attributes, you'll see here that it's using the same uh, uh, the same name as the attribute, and so it does have to resolve it uh, and refer to uh, the the uh, the uh, the attribute for the object versus the parameter of the method. All right. So anyway, so this is my this is the code that I'm going to go with. Actually, let me create one more method, and I'm going to call this set all uh, because I want to demonstrate here that I can in my uh, uh, in my signatures I don't actually need to provide the name of the parameter. I can actually just give the types, uh, and then in my uh, in my my source file, I can name the types or name the uh, uh, I can name the the parameters. So let's do this. My class set all. So I have an integer a zero integer a one character a two. <clears throat> and then I'm going to set the attributes. So here, since there's no ambiguity, I can just refer to a uh, attribute zero, attribute one, and attribute two. Okay. So there's the. Um, so this is my this is my class. I now need to include this class or use this class in my demo program. So let's first start off by <coughs> making sure that we include the .h file. So anytime I create a class, uh, I need to make sure that uh, other classes are um, well know about the class. So I need to include this. I'm using quotation marks here for include uh, so that the compiler will look in the current source directory before going and looking in the library directories. Um, and then the other thing I need to do is make sure I use the namespace that I defined before, so CSE274. And now I can create my objects. So let's create two versions of this. So my class. Um, yeah, let's do as a pointer uh, m0 equals new my class. This looks a lot like uh, defining a reference variable in Java, because I'm using this new piece of it here. Uh, one of the things to note is that uh, in this instance, that I'm using something called a pointer that you'll learn about later in the in in the uh, in in coming lectures, uh, 
the uh, when I refer to anything within M0, and actually let's print out something here. So let's say M0 get attribute 0. The value of this is going to be just M0. And then I'm going to use the arrow and get attribute 0. So whenever I use this thing called a pointer, whenever I want to refer to any of the methods, I do have to use this arrow. So whatever this pointer is and its uh, corresponding method. There is actually another way to use, um, use class objects in C++. I want to do that here, M1. I can just define a variable, M1. That's it. I don't need to... Uh, I don't need to do a new operation on it because I'm not allocating any memory. Um, but then I can actually refer to the <clears throat> the actual value um, through using the dot operations. I can do it m one dot and get attribute. And actually, let's get attribute one here. Change this. Okay, so anyway, so that's my um, that's how I'm going to use um, these uh, um, uh, these instances. Uh, we will get into in much more detail um, the use of pointers. It's very important. Uh, oh, I do have to do one more thing if I'm going to use this M0 as a pointer. I do need to make sure I delete M0. Okay. So um, anyway, so this is my program. Let's go ahead and run it. Save, and run. Uh, something didn't compile correctly. I have an error. Well, I have too many of these. Let's try that again. Rebuild it. So there's my program. So in the first case, using a pointer. Second one, just defining it as a variable. So anyway, that, uh, that concludes this episode. We'll obviously have many more that we will go through as we start to look at this language.